Good morning, and thank you for joining uh, Baltic Horizon webinar. My name is Alicia DeRoy, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. Before we proceed with the presentation, I will shortly introduce you with the agenda. The webinar is hosted by the fund manager of Baltic Horizon Fund, Tarma Karatam, who will introduce the results of the first six months. Right after the presentation, we will answer your questions. Use the questions panel on the right side of your GoToWebinar player to send them in at any time during the webinar. Now I'm going to hand it over to Tarma Karatam to start with the presentation. Hello, good morning, and welcome to the first ever um, Baltic Horizon Fund webinar. Um, we hope to have uh, many of these uh, in the future, uh, presumably one for, for every quarter. Um, this webinar will be talking about uh, the first half of 2016, when uh, the fund was still uh, to be merged um, with, uh, with Baltic Opportunity Fund, but I will explain that in, in, in due course. Now, um, the agenda of the presentation is, um, is consisting of three, uh, three uh, topics. One is uh, a, an overview of uh, the Baltic Horizon IPO process, um, what happened during the 2016 year, um, uh, how the old uh, Baltic Opportunity Fund was uh, merged with the newly launched uh, Baltic Horizon Fund, and, and some implication in, in that regard. Um, then the second point talks about the portfolio, and now not only the portfolio that was um, taken over from both Baltic Opportunity Fund, but also includes now the the um, the two other assets that we that we acquired um, post uh, post uh, end of June, and um, then the third topic will will uh, focus focus a bit more on the financial results of of the first half. And Q and A at the end. So um, this is a slide that, that sort of tries to uh, and aims to visualize what happened uh, during the first uh, first six months of this year. And um, Horizon Fund got started. Uh, Baltic Horizon Fund um, essentially is a newly established fund. Um, that took over uh, the old uh, Baltic Opportunity Fund's assets and the investor base. So we we kicked off the the, the IPO project um, already at the end of last year, and um, there were uh, several processes that needed to be uh, completed uh, in order to to make um, make the IPO uh, successful. So one of them was. As you see in February, um, when we uh, submitted the AFM license application, it was to upgrade our previous um, fund management license uh, in Estonia that was obtained in, in 2009. Uh, so that was a, a technical and uh, process with the local FSA um, to get the license in order to be able to market. Uh, the new fund and uh, and uh, and complete the IPO. Uh, what was very essential uh, for this to go forward uh, was the Baltic Opportunity Fund's um, investors deciding in the investor meeting um, to uh, to to go for an IPO to to merge with a new fund. Um, and become a listed first ever listed entity a real estate fund um, in the Baltic uh, states. After uh, law, uh, there was a lot of preparation for that and discussions with the current investor base. And in March, uh, on March 17th, uh, in in a meeting in Stockholm, uh, the investors decided uh, to give uh, us the manager a mandate uh, to to go for an IPO. Now going forward, um, we um, we had to go through a number of uh, structuring uh, structuring events. 
One of them was establishing a new uh, uh, Baltic Horizon Fund, where, which would merge then with the Baltic Opportunity Fund, and uh, and also prepare the merger application for the FSA. Alongside, in March and April, uh, we were preparing a prospectus, um, and as well uh, uh, cooperating with the auditor KPMG. Um, to get uh, the prospectus properly prepared and as well submitted to the FSA for registration. Then on the 23rd of May, um, we received an Estonian uh, Financial Supervisory Authority decision um, that, that uh, provided us with the full AFM license um, to manage alternative investment funds and as well approved the Baltic Horizon Fund as such um, and the merger process. So we could again go forward with, um, with now full on marketing to, uh, to the new investors um, that we wanted to bring on board during the IPO process. Uh, one of the preconditions uh, in an investor meeting in March of uh, Baltic Opportunity Fund, the old fund, was that uh, at least um, a 20 million euros worth of uh, new uh, equity, net proceeds, would be raised um, in the IPO process uh, so that the fund would grow and, and, be, and, and diversify its investor base um, in order for it to become um, a bigger success in the future. So um, in, in May, June, uh, marketing efforts um, across the Baltics, Poland and, uh, and Sweden mainly uh, took place and uh, uh, we were glad to see very strong interest in the IPO, um, in the IPO process and uh, from the new investors. Um, so that on the 29th of, of June, we were able to announce uh, successfully uh, reaching the, the threshold of net uh, 20 million euros of new equity, um, as well as, as providing a, a partial exit for some of the investors, um, or two investors actually, uh, from the old Baltic Opportunity Fund. So the gross proceeds of, of IPO um, in June were close to 30 million actually. Then on the 30th of, of June um, the merger of the two funds uh, finally took place. It was also the precondition uh, of the merger that the IPO would be a success. So, um, so that, that took place uh, the, on the last day of June. And on 6th of July, uh, the fund was listed on Nasdaq Tallinn Stock Exchange um, in the fund list of, of the Baltic, uh, Baltic Nasdaq uh, Stock Exchange, OMX Nasdaq, yes. So um, I would say that um, this signaled the new life for, for, for the fund, uh, even though that the assets um, of, of the previous fund were taken over, um, so nothing um, intrinsically changed, uh, let's put it this way, but as the fund became um, an evergreen fund without the term, um, then um, the, you know, even though the investment strategy of the fund changed, then uh, the way um, that, that what, 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 when, when you don't have a term or in, in a fund, then uh, it, it changes a little bit the, uh, the way uh, how investors should, should view uh, this, this, uh, this investment vehicle. And uh, it was really an organic sort of development uh, throughout the years in the previous fund's life where you know, we were growing the fund, acquiring good assets, and at the same time, we were able to pay uh, very attractive dividends throughout the years. And um, and as we have um, discussed it with the previous investor base, and now also with uh, with the new investors that came on board, uh, this Baltic, uh, Baltic Horizon Fund now uh, its its number one goal is to pay out. Uh, recurring 
diligence on a regular basis and um, and have the investors price the portfolio and and the dividend yield um, through um, stock exchange acquiring uh, units uh, on stock exchange then maybe a few few key f key sort of attributions uh, or or, um, or specificities of, of this fund um, it doesn't um, it's not it's it's a closed end fund, so no no obligate, obligatory re redemptions. So investors are able to trade on stock exchange um, uh, between each other, uh, and uh, stock exchange did help bring uh, listing on on the stock exchange uh, did help bring a lot of uh, additional publicity to this portfolio to this fund, and um, we believe that it is much better. For, for for not only the investors but the manager uh, to manage real estate funds when they are not um, obligated to exit um, at certain uh, certain periods um, in the future um, that means even forced to exit um, so the investors will be able to trade when they prefer um, on stock exchange and the manager is also able to make uh, acquisitions and disposals at, at the best judgment um, of, the, of the manager. So, so that was one of the key reasons also for, for listing the fund and making it evergreen. What we also did uh, during the uh, preparation period is, is uh, change a few things um, and one of them was, was uh, reduce the maximum leverage which was allowed uh, at fund level as previously the maximum maximum was 70 <coughs> percent and uh, now going forward uh, the maximum leverage is 65 whereas the management of Baltic Horizon aimed to have a CV of 50 percent um, overall and you'll see that, um, that that's where our, our, our goals are also at, at, the, at the current period, at the current time, um, we also um, adjusted a little bit the governance model that uh, that we had. And uh, since we became an alternative investment fund manager, um, we have um, we have uh, the internal investment committee, as previously we had a an external investment committee in place. And together with the management board, uh, the investment committee uh, makes investment and divestment uh, decisions, as well as other decisions which are uh, stipulated in the fund rules. Uh, we did introduce um, a, an organ called Fund Supervisory Board, and this is really an advisory board that uh, would predominantly deal with conflicts of interest any potential conflicts of interest, flagging those and, and keeping keeping a good eye on, on, on the manager um, as well as you know the, the regulatory environment um, that's uh, surrounding the manager and the fund. So um, in addition to of course um, these organs uh, we work with a number of other organs that uh, uh, and partners that uh, supervise and monitor the funds. Um, of course, the Estonian FSA, then the Depository Bank, uh, Swed Bank. We have uh, fund administration services also provided by Swed Bank. We have as well uh, rules to follow uh, uh, that are coming from OMX Nasdaq. And um, and that's 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 the universe of of our, our let's say closest uh, stakeholders. Of course, internal audits and, and uh, audits are, are done by the by the big four, uh, one of the big four audit companies. Now moving on to the portfolio, and um, as I mentioned before, um, when um, the two funds were merged, the five properties were taken over um, from the previous. Uh, Previous uh, entity, and uh, but we did uh, have negotiations on the side already during the IPO process uh, in order 
to, to make a quick acquisitions after the IPO and uh, the, the property negotiation property deals that we were preparing are now materialized um, during July. Actually, the, 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 the sixth property, which was the headquarters, G4S headquarters in Tallinn, uh, we closed one day after we got listed on Tallinn Stock Exchange. So we had that lined up um, and, and closed very, very quickly. We were also then, uh, at the same time, um, working on closing the second deal, which is um, which an office building in Riga. Now, there's, um, there's not a lot to be said about G4S headquarters. It's occupied by G4S on a, on a long-term lease uh, basis. It was built to suit for them, and we do um, value um, and assess the tenant, let's say, exit risk from this building to be relatively low. Um, so we do expect them to prolong their lease um, when, when, it, when it becomes uh, terminable in 2023 by another five to 10 years. So we, we, we expect this, this property to become a solid cash cow. Um, in Ukmala's uh, bureau in, in Riga, we have a number of tents. Um, main tenant there is SCB Bank uh, Global Services and um, they are expanding um, they have an expansion sort of rollout plan in the, in the property when where they are um, taking over offices of, of some other tenants that we are replacing over the next uh, 24 months and the seller of this property continues to be the property manager here, and may we, we, we have an agreement in place where they will make sure that that, that expansion successfully uh, is completed. And um, another strong tenant, well, strong tenants that we have here is of course uh, Cabot and and Bosch. Both of these properties are fully leased out. Uh, we're just in this property, we, in the coming years, we're, we're strengthening the tenant mix, so we're allowing SCP to, to expand a bit further, and uh, we'll, we'll make sure that other tenants remain happy as well. Uh, this slide sort of encompasses the current uh, portfolio. There's, um, there's more information about this portfolio on our webpage. But I think uh, all in all, we are um, very proud of this portfolio as, as we, over, over the years, the vacancy of, of each, and, each and every one of these assets has been quite low, and uh, especially in some of them. And maybe a few words. Um, we, our investment universe, or, or investment, what we consider investment grade assets are, I can actually name five categories. Three of them in retail and, and two of them in office. Um, it has been so that in the, in the past we have targeted either CBD, uh, Central Business District office buildings um, uh, and, and, and shopping centers. So one of the CBD uh, shopping centers that we have acquired is Europa Shopping Center in Vilnius. Then what we also like in terms of retail is is neighborhood uh, supermarkets, so little smaller shopping centers that cater to the immediate uh, immediate uh, catchment area around it. And um, to name those two uh, in our portfolio is Sky Supermarket in Riga and almost Pro Supermarket in or little shopping center in in, in Vilnius. And uh, why we like this type of uh, uh, segment. So this type of segment is is that uh, they have shown to be the most resilient uh, properties throughout the crisis, because even during crisis crisis periods, people need to buy food and and simple services such as such uh, hairdresser um, services, um, pharmacy, you know, flowers, that are the usual satellite tenants in in these neighborhood supermarkets or shopping centers. Then uh, one interesting property that we have in our books is Coca-Cola Plaza, which is a, a, a essentially a cinema property on an anchor lease uh, here in Tallinn, and it's right in the center. 
um, it is backed up by by uh, by the Swedish uh, mother company uh, SF uh, Biofilms, I think that's what it's uh, it's called now, um, and we have signed a five million euro guarantee with them. So um, it's been very solid property in terms of performance uh, since its acquisition in 2013. And uh, we do see a lot of possibilities in Coca-Cola Plaza to expand um, uh, and, and create value in the coming years. Then um, these are the sort of the retail investment universe that we, we prefer and we like, you know, either if it's CBD or if it's if it's neighborhood supermarkets. Now in office, um, we have acquired three office buildings and uh, Essentially, um, they are office buildings that uh, cater to the to the back office tenants of, of successful uh, Swedish um, international, mostly Swedish and Finnish international companies, but also other American companies, and, and that basically have found safe haven in in the Baltic states when it comes for back office services offered to their to the to the group uh, to the to the corporations. And in Incorna we have uh, we have um, Swedbank with their IT. We do have as well local uh, information system authority as as key tenants. G4S, as you know, the, it's not really a back office; it's actually their headquarters, but um, it's lo located in in um, in a sort of a little bit of a back office uh, location. And Lukmala's Biroi, we have as, as I mentioned before, we have. SCB and Cabot uh, with their operations, which are very going very very strong. So moving forward, um, then a few words about the financial statements. And if you, we have compared here the first half of 2016 to the first half of of 2015, and. Uh, what I can generally say is that, um, you know, as the vacancies have remained low um, and and rental levels as well are stable, then um, the rental income has 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 uh, has it has grown um, and uh, essentially it has remained very stable, very solid, and has grown due to certain. Uh, Certain elements, and uh, one of one of the key elements uh, in this comparison is that uh, um, we acquired Europa Shopping Center in only in March 2015. So some of the uh, rental income was not there last year, last last year's first half. So in this this year's first half, the the property uh, was in in full swing when it comes to rental income. So that's how how that increase can be. Uh, can be explained. Um, in the administration, uh, the, the, well, another thing I would like to mention is the first half of 2016 has a few sort of one-off um, one items and, and of course one, one of those such items is the IPO related uh, setup costs um, that uh, were recharged to, to, to the fund after the IPO uh, it's about 500,000 euros. That's in the administrative expenses line. So that um, that's a one-off um, expense, and and also evaluation loss as such um, has been recorded, um, which doesn't actually come from from revaluation of properties, but rather from completing uh, the second stage of of Thomas Pro property. And paying a uh, sort of success um, fee payment to the to the developer that was able to complete it in time and get all the tenants moved in on time, uh, now paying us rent. Then um, income tax, uh, maybe that's something to 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 note here. Um, effectively, cash flow wise, the the income tax. Uh, uh, Charge paid was uh, forty six thousand euros. Uh, so the um, that's just to 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 exemplify that um, 
income tax that we, we, we sort of book is not uh, the actual cash outflow uh, from, from the portfolio. Uh, a quick overview also of the of the balance sheet, and uh, as you can see, uh, we have uh, increased our equity base, and um, we have continued to make uh, profits from operations. Um, this the end of the uh, end of uh, June uh, results don't. Uh, yet include the, uh, the additional acquisitions, the two acquisitions that we made in July and August, um, naturally. Uh, so they, they, show, they show us uh, a, snap, a snapshot uh, just before that, when the new equity was, was brought on board to make those, those additional acquisitions. The good thing was that we did invest uh, all of, almost all of the the new uh, equity raised to those two buildings, so we don't really have equity um, that is sitting on our balance sheet earning nothing, and uh, that was of course a clear goal um, that um, we would only take on so much equity that we can spend and that we can invest into into similar quality properties that would um, enhance the portfolio and uh, and sort of um, address the portfolio level uh, risks when it comes to geographical diversification and tenant diversification. Uh, one other comment to make is, let me see if, um, yeah, it's, it's the cost of debt and uh, um, total cost of debt uh, um, as at the end of June was 2.2% uh, for the portfolio. Um, as you know, we are living in a negative interest rate environment, and um, and uh, and that has also positively contributed towards uh, the cost of debt um, decreasing um, as we have come along over the past two years, and it looks to be decreasing even even in the future, as uh, as we have had many many dialogues with the banks in regards to the new acquisitions. So that's that's positive news. Going forward, uh, we do aim to do two things with uh, with with that. One is to prolong uh, the loan agreements, meaning that we fix the low cost of debt, uh, and the goal is to fix it uh, for a period of at least five years. Um, so we can really focus on the, on the top line, which means you know keeping tenants happy and and uh, making sure that that we uh, fulfill the value uh, value added opportunities. Uh, we complete the expansions, for example, and um, and also increase rents where possible uh, as the economies of the Baltic states continue to be growing. Then to sort of sum up uh, this uh, short presentation, um, what are the key priorities now since we have become a listed fund, and we've had several strategy sessions um, with um, with the management um, of of this of this vehicle, along with um, with Northern Horizon Capital's um, group. Um, management, as well as the fund supervisory board, and and uh, you know the, the number one goal is to have a very diversified and a liquid real estate uh, fund, um, which doesn't come the liquidity doesn't come from you know selling the 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 properties, um, but rather from having a very wide investor base, providing that liquidity. On, on stock exchange for any investor that would like to either ent enter or exit uh, the fund at any given moment of time. We have just started this journey and uh, we, have s we have a strategy in place how to become even more publicly well known, how to really introduce uh, not only to the Baltics but to the Nordics um, what is this real estate investment fund structure all about. 
uh, what does it do, what risks does it take. So it will be an ongoing process and, uh, and the trading on, on a stock exchange has been you know, for the first uh, two months relatively modest but, um, but it's only now that, uh, that we're getting the proper, uh, we're starting to get the proper publicity as, as we were a small club uh, before the merger of, of the two funds took place and the IPO. Then I see there has been a question. Um, is the question is is there a set or targeted payout ratio of the fund? In the prospectus, in the prospectus, the uh, uh, the description of the payout ratio, which is still so, and also in the fund rules, is that we aim to pay out at least eighty percent of the of the uh, of, of, of the results of, from, from core operations. So essentially we want to be uh, following the concept of, of being a REIT, internationally known REIT, even though this current fund um, doesn't follow a, a specific REIT uh, sort of legislation, since we don't have as, as developed legislation in, in Estonia yet, but the aim is to pay out at least 80 percent um, uh, on an annual basis, so all the operational proceeds to pay out rather than reinvest them to, to new opportunities. I have another question here, uh, are you considering further capital raisings? Uh, yes, we are considering them. Um, we, are, um, we are investigating and discussing, discussing uh, you know, what uh, basically where shall we raise the capital and and also the, the, the second very important question is that where shall we invest it and uh, I would answer uh, to this question in a way that unless we don't have very interesting and comparable uh, real estate investment opportunities um, we will not raise capital but if we, we will but if we find those then um, yes we are looking to raise more, more capital and in a sustainable way grow the fund uh, um, uh, grow the fund further. Uh, third question I have here is uh, will you be active in buybacks to facilitate exit for those investors looking to needing to go to leave? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I think uh, the honest answer is that um, we will not actively be, be doing that because um, in order to you know basically allow redemptions from a real estate fund and we've seen some some bad examples in, in the UK over the past uh, six months uh, due to Brexit actually um, it is difficult to 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 allow investors to sell uh, you know into the into into the fund and uh, and so that the fund will be able to be able to buy buy them out it really has to come then from uh, from the cash that the fund has um, and in case that's not sufficient then it have to be, again for, be forced to sell properties. Um, we, we may consider um, for the general sort of success of the of the investor base um, buying back units uh, from the stock exchange in case we see the the stock price not trading at at the level which uh, which which would be sustainable in the long run, uh, but these are all considerations or op options that we have, and we will consider those in case the time comes. Um, then uh, one more question: One of the biggest real estate market challenges you foresee in the next twelve to eighteen months? The um, <clears throat> I think the, the challenges here in the Baltic states, um, I think the biggest challenge really is that uh, that there's a pressure on acquisition yields and um, if you look at the real estate the investment market uh, in Europe in general, if you look at what's happening in the Nordics, if you look at what's happening in other countries then then it's only I think only foreseeable that that uh, the pressure on the yields will in the Baltics will also continue. Um, the good thing is is that um, with with the lowering of of 
you know, yield expectations, the cost of debt um, is also going down. So, so the spread between the acquisition yield and the cost of debt um, is expected to remain relatively the same over the next 12, 12 20 to 18 months. Um, I think um, uh, to answer maybe one more thing here is uh, the supply of, of new properties, um, especially in, in Vilnius when it comes to office properties there, has to be monitored very, very closely. Uh, we may see, um, because you know, some of the, it's how real estate markets work, you know, supply sometimes is all being built at the same time, so, so uh, most likely we'll see um, some vacancies in, in that segment, um, in that country, in Vilnius, that is. Uh, so we may see some new office buildings having, you know, 10 to 20 percent vacancy uh, over, over the next, let's say, one or two years, but, um, but I think the office, uh, office stock even in Vilnius is, is, is not too excessive, so it will be absorbed uh, over, the, over the next couple of years, um, I'm pretty sure on that. One more question, uh, can you describe what you mean by layered fee on market cap and how has that, the performance fee work? Uh, yes I can. The, uh, the fee, uh, the management fee, as this is an externally managed fund, um, used to be uh, a percentage on the NAV of, of, uh, of the fund. However, during the, the IPO process, together with the investors, um, uh, and that was really a proposal from the investor base that to, to, to make the fee dependent on actually market capitalization. And, and we agreed because um, going forward, we would like uh, the investors to, to sort of to price the fund, not, not only on, on, on looking how valuators value the portfolios, um, but also on, on, the, on the dividend potential and, and the dividend uh, track record uh, that the fund can pay. So as our priority is to pay recurring dividends, then I think market cap would, would, would reflect that in the best way. Uh, and that's why it is now related to, to our uh, management fee, which is then a a percentage of of uh, of market cap at the moment 1.5 percent, um, which is which is going down in case the fund grows further um, as a weighted average. Then um, the performance fee uh, works so that it's we 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 took that concept from also from international REITs and uh, it's called the uh, adjusted funds from operation, which means that you take a um, a net operating income of the fund, um, you subtract uh, any maintenance capex uh, that has to be invested into keeping the properties in good shape, attractive for tenants. Also, administrative, all administrative expenses, including the uh, the management fee and the cost of debt, which is interest interest cost. So essentially, is is the net cash flow from operations after capex, administrate administration fees, and uh, cost of debt. And in case that is eight percent to uh, to the invested equity. If, if it's above eight percent, then uh, the proposal is uh, was and, uh, and and right now the situation is that twenty percent of that, um, in a, which is exceeding eight percent, will be uh, will be uh, also managers um, managers sort of fee. Uh, we have uh, at the same time capped the performance fee uh, to zero point four percent of the NAV, so that you know. In, in, in all ways, it cannot sort of go out of proportions. Um, but again, the, the number one goal is to make net cash flows from operations, and, and in this case, performance fees even related to, to total net cash flows from the fund. Uh, so these are the uh, at least five questions at the moment um, that. Um, that I see. 
Um, now coming back to the key priority slide, um, I think um, many of these um, topics were already addressed uh, during the uh, Q&A session. So uh, yes, our plan is to deliver quarterly dividends and uh, and and to grow the fund further. Um, since we do see, uh, I think, cost efficiency in, in growing the fund further. Uh, of course, one investor asked me the other day that, so how, how large do you, do you plan to grow the fund, you know? And uh, we have set a, a maximum cap, uh, I think, right now, which is, I think, um, that, that we foresee that we shouldn't exceed, um, and that's uh, 500 million euros in equity, as then the fund will be a billion euro fund, and we estimate that with a billion euro fund, we would have been invested then into 10% of the of the investment grade assets across the Baltic capitals. So we we have estimated the the total total depth of the market to be eight to ten billion euros um, at the moment in the Baltic capitals. So we would like to. Um, hold at any point of time not more than 10% of that total. And uh, and yes, so um, one, 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 I think on a closing, closing remark, uh, I'd like to say that, um, that our number one goal today, in addition to paying out the dividend uh, and creating a dividend, um, uh, from the portfolio is uh, in increasing increased publicity of the fund because we do see that uh, that would uh, hugely improve uh, liquidity on stock exchange and um, and the Baltic uh, retail investors um, are very real estate religious but I think this investment case has to be properly introduced to them and um, and we see a bright future in, in, in that regard. Um, I have one more question here. Do you see a limit in the bank's capacity to finance locally? I think, of course, there, 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 there could be a limit, but, um, but considering the total amount of, of, uh, of lending that has, you know, or has been available uh, from from the banks to the to the Baltic market. I think we're still a small fish. Um, I have uh, discussed uh, with the banks, you know, what uh, what is the limit towards real estate? One, what is the limit towards one a real estate fund? And uh, they do have certain limits, but then again, they're they're quite you know they're in the range of fifty to hundred million euros. And considering that we have a a large, quite a, quite a lot, you know, relatively large number of, of, of banks. Normally, the the banks that we approach when going for financing is is, is between six to eight. And um, now, if you if you just take those limits between fifty and hundred million, then you know, borrowing five hundred million in total uh, should not be an issue. With the uh, let's say usual suspects in the in the market. Okay, uh, I think that concludes my uh, presentation. Um, is are there any more questions? Um, if if not, then I'm always available over over phone or over email. And um, as this session was recorded, this could be uh, reviewed and shared. Um, also with uh, with other uh, colleagues or partners in case uh, anyone prefers so um, so thank you very much uh, from my side hopefully this was um, informative and uh, yeah in case of any questions just drop me a line over email and uh, we'll take it from there uh, going forward uh, we do expect these webinars to to be also done on a quarterly basis and I'm actually looking very much forward for the 
Q3 webinar, which uh, would include also the results of, of the two additional assets that we acquired now in, in July and August. So thank you very much once again. On behalf of our, ho our host, as well as the team at NASDAQ, <clears throat> we thank you for joining us and taking time to view the presentation. Have a great day.